of the G G20 existing membership. Most of the countries around the table are becoming far more important players. This includes Africa, and I only mentioned the one, the continent of Africa, which it, within the next 25 years will have the largest population of any continent in Canada, or in the world. Um, and not, not only that, but if they're able to work on the common market that they're trying to build in Africa, and I think that Canada will want to help them, then they will be a very powerful economy. And when you start thinking about that, and you think of the other, some of the other Asian countries, Indonesia with a population of close to 165 million, Vietnam, which is now becoming a major economy, this is going to be a very different world out there, and I believe that the G20 is going to play an important role in it. Um, now, the second thing is we're going to have to recognize that there's a, a power shift that's in the process of taking place. When the G20 was created, there was only one superpower, and that was the United States. Its post-war record as a superpower was, was, was very important, but the, but the G20 is now embarking upon a new transition. Fact of the matter is, we all know that within the next decade, China will be, in terms of, not in terms of richness per capita, but will be the most powerful superpower in terms of the sheer, sheer economic might uh, in, in the world. And I, I, all I'm going to point I'm saying is, we don't need any more trade wars. But that's when we have got two superpowers, and then a very a large number of major economies, that's not going to be the same G20, and it's not going to be the same easy group in order to bring some kind of a consensus. And I think that Canada is going to have, um, it's, it's, I think Canada is going to do two things. I think Canada will take the leadership of this. I think Canada is in the ideal position to basically make the G20 work. But it's going to be a very different G20. The other thing, the other thing that I think has to happen, the final thing in this long winded speech is, <laughs> yeah, you see, they never laugh when I was Prime Minister. So that's really <laughs> but the, the, the other thing that is, that is really important is there is an, an attitude more and more being heard around the world and that in fact the failure to seek collective action really comes about because people say that collective action, countries cooperating, really strikes at the whole notion of national security, national sovereignty. What they're saying is, my God, if I have to give up power to work with you people, I'm giving up in terms of my national territory. Sovereignty. I've been a 